River family, thank you so much for joining us again this uh, third Sunday in November. Uh, glad that you're with us. My name is Pastor David, and we first of all I want to tell you about some things going on in the life of the congregation. Then I want to tell you a couple other things. First of all, uh, every Tuesday morning, 6 a.m., our men's group meets. Uh, we are just walking our way slowly through the book of Genesis. Uh, that is Genesis chapter 28 is the book that will are in the the chapter that will be in. You can read it. Show up. Don't have to be an expert. You can read it while we're reading it the first time. Just come on out. We'd love to have you there. We'll have caffeine uh, ready ready for you. This uh, week has concluded our small groups. However, however, there's still an opportunity for you to enjoy fellowship together and to eat too much food. And that is Rivers Giving, which is going to be November the 18th at 615, right in our foyer. Uh, you will have the opportunity to bring some desserts or sides. We're just going to have an amazing feed and an amazing time together in a real short worship service. Come on out. If you've never been able to attend the church, but you want to come get to know people, you come on that night. It'd be a great, great night uh, to come be a part of things. Uh, so the groups are done now. But I also want to tell you, we see uh, in this era that you are actually a part of our, our family. You're part of our, our community, our community of faith. Even though you're not necessarily able to be here in person, we see you as a part of our uh, online community and a part of the river. Um, and so there's some ways that you can participate in being a part of the river. You can be in prayer for what we've got going on. Lots of ministries, lots of exciting things going on. Be in prayer for us. Be in prayer for the leadership here. Also, want to encourage you uh, to be a participant by by giving, and you can give three different ways. You can mail a check to five thirty nine, U.S. Highway eighty three, uh, Abilene, Texas seven nine six zero two, or you can give by secure text eight four three two one, or you can give through our website, which is theriveravilene dot com. And uh, the cool thing about that is we had a couple of glitches this week. Everything is all worked out. So we'd love for you to be able to give in that way. So let me just lay this thought out, this uh, particular um, question for you to ponder. You don't have to share with each other, but it's a, a, a question to ponder. Have you ever been offended by Jesus? We'll unpack that in a little bit. God bless you. See you in a sec. God, we come before you this morning just thanking you for your goodness. Just in complete awe of how amazing you are. God, we lay it down right now at your feet. All the worries, all the cares, all the busyness of life. Lord, we praise your name this morning. Come in power. In Jesus' name.
Give the Lord praise in this place. His word says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord of lords. God, that's what we do this morning. We confess that you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, the silence, the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no
church What a powerful name it is What a powerful name What a name, the name above all names. Come on. Can you give him praise in this house, church? What a powerful name it is. The name that we serve, the name above all names. Hello again, River family. Pastor David here. Uh, glad that you joined us again this third uh, Sunday in November. Uh, we've been talking about offense. Um, there's a lot of aspects to being offended or, or offense and the damage that it causes in relationships and, and multiple areas. Uh, it reminds me of this man who talked about um, eating dinner with his wife. He said his wife made dinner for him one night and that she was highly offended whenever he dropped his fork and his knife and he said, this meal is terrible. And she said, well, then you just boil your own toast next time. I don't know about offense, in which direction it actually went in that particular case, but offense goes in multiple directions. We talked um, in our first week about the fact that, that we're not designed uh, to be in relationships of offense. We're not designed to take those things up. And the more we learn about our forgiveness from our Father and the depth of that, the more we can begin the process of letting go of offenses and dropping things um, Last week we talked about the fact that we can be so settled inside that offenses are less effectual in our lives. They have uh, a lot less sway in our lives and they don't necessarily uh, burden us so heavily that we can't walk freely because those uh, whom the Son has set free are free indeed. And that is God's call. So let me go back to my question because I want to talk about a third area of offense today. And let me ask you, have you ever been... Uh, offended by Jesus? Have you ever been offended by God? Have you ever been offended in church and put it toward God? You know, I don't want to be around those people. They're just, and then you don't want to be around God. You ever thought about the offense that can be picked up by those who are brothers and sisters in Christ to the point that they are beginning to push God? Away, And you may say, ah, that's irreverent. And I, no, I'm not offended by God at all. Let me read some Jesus statements. And I want you to just honestly, honestly, be honest with yourself in, in what is happening inside of you. Are you beginning to become offended? Are you beginning to step back? Are you beginning to feel somewhat um, frustrated or dissonant from God and distant from God? Matthew 5. You heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's kind of offensive. He also said this, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, Do not suppose that I've come to bring peace, but, peace to earth, but I've come to bring not peace, but a sword. What about this? He's walking through this village, and he says to one man, he says uh, to another, follow me. And he says, Lord, permit me first to go bury my father. And he said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Another also said, I'll follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to my home, to those that are there. And, but Jesus said to him, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God can't go say goodbye. Jesus answered this in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. Only one way. 
Hmm. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Hmm. How you doing? How you doing? No one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Disturbed? Bothered just a little bit? Listen to this one. Jesus says this in Matthew 18. If your hand or foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. It's better for you to enter life Uh, enter into life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it from you. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be cast into fiery hell. Are you offended yet? Are your sensibilities beginning to prickle just a little bit? What about this, men? But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully, just looks at a woman lustfully, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Offended? Blessed are you, Jesus says in Matthew 5, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. That's a blessed way to go. You offended yet? Jesus said this, If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone was hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. That's better for that. Don't cause anyone to stumble. Are you offended yet? Something rising up in you? When he's talking to the religious leaders in Matthew 23, Jesus says this, You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Isn't that sweet Jesus? Sweet Jesus. He don't sound too sweet right there. Now listen to this. This sets up what we're going to talk about today. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, that's him, and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true uh, food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and as I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven like manna, not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. You've got to take in my flesh and my blood in order to know and experience life. Beloved, we live in a, in a world today where lots of texts, lots of scriptures are skipped over or they are just not preached or they're not explored because they feel offensive. And yet, they're the words of life. So let me ask you again. You ever taken up offense, been offended by Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, even our bodies to what you want to do with us today, what you want to do to encourage us to not take up offense, but to take up the words of life. And so, Lord, I want to pray for those today My heart is heavy over those today that have separated themselves from you, that have held you at arm's length, that are in the desert right now because they are offended by you. They've taken up offense against you. And Lord, they are very alone, very alone, very hard, very bitter. I pray that by today's message, by your word, they would begin to be set free. And choose the words of life. So Lord, now as we hear your word, as we are penetrated in our spirits and our hearts by your spirit from this word, may we not take offense. Lord, as for me, I pray that I would decrease and that you 
would increase and be our preacher and teacher today. And all the people said, Amen. All right. I'm going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6. What I just read to you about eating the flesh, drinking the blood, what I just read to you is what he just finished saying, and you're going to see the rest of the story. It says this. He said this while teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Now watch what happens. On hearing it, on hearing it, many of his disciples, let me unpack the word disciple. In this particular point, it's, it's not capitalized. Disciples means those are sort of following. They're probably following in a casual way. They think he's interesting. Let's call them fans, but not sold out, which is a lot of people who call themselves Christians. Fans, but not really sold out. And they're hearing some difficult teaching. They're not fully understanding it. Many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. And then they say, who can accept it? A lot of people say, who can understand it? It's interpreted that way. But it's scleros. It's, it's a Greek word, man. Who can really accept and embrace this teaching? This is a hard teaching. You see, Jesus threw down the gauntlet of what was really offensive. Now, what, what does he say? Aware that his disciples were grumbling. I love this word, gogatso. It's, it's a grumbling. It, it, it means to, to murmur or to, to mutter with muffled undertones. It's a smoldering discontent. They're talking. It's kind of what happens in most modern churches whenever the pastor stands up and says, we're going to do a capital campaign to build a new building. <laughs> They're murmuring, what in the world? What did he say? What the heck? How are we going to do this? I don't understand what he's saying. I can't embrace it. It feels really, really weird to me. Aware means supernaturally. He knew what was going on. Jesus said to them, does this offend you? The Greek word literally meaning, does this trip you up? Does this cause you to lose faith in me, to create distrust, to disconnect and to go a different direction, although you shouldn't. Does this offend you? Then, what will it be like if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Now, that's really offensive because basically saying, I came down from heaven, I'm going back to heaven. That's offensive. <laughs> that's really offensive to the current culture. Then he says this, the Spirit, capital S, Spirit of God, gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Spirit, life, flesh, nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Now watch what he says here. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. Now listen closely. Offended disciples, offended uh, 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 believers. He says this. From this time on, many of his disciples turned back and they no longer followed him. Do you know somebody that slowly ebbed out of church? Slowly ebbed out of fellowship? Slowly ebbed out of dynamic, on fire faith? could be taking on offense and letting it get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, Jesus said this, You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter, he's always the spokesman, always the spokesman. He said, Lord, where are we going to go? Who who are we going to go to? To whom are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have come to believe to put our faith in, pisteo, to put our faith in you, that you are the Holy One of God. We know this. So, beloved, I want to I want to talk to you about um, a couple of concepts, and and these concepts I think are going to help you if you've had offense. If if I were to say to you right now, do you do you feel really close to the Lord, or do you feel like you're in a desert? 
a lot of times when people feel like they're in the desert, they feel like they need to, they need to change something. They need to listen to a different kind of music. Well, gosh, we need a, a, a different person to listen to at church. We need to go to a different church. We, we need to do this differently. We need to do that. We've got to change stuff when, in fact, they may have picked up offenses toward Christ through the body of Christ, and they keep letting those offenses grow and fester and then push them away. And all of a sudden, they're in the desert. And they're far from God. So let me give you two things. And the second thing being a choice. And where those choices lead us. Number one, hear this. Hear this at the very core of your being. Who Jesus is. What Jesus says. How Jesus operates. How Jesus is perceived. Is always offensive to your flesh. Almost Every single time, it will be offensive to your flesh. You see, when Jesus says, I want you to, uh, to, to uh, take up your cross daily and follow me, that's offensive. When he says, you can't serve me and success or money, that's offensive to my flesh. When he says, you, you need to follow me and, 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 and choose me over even your family, that's offensive to my flesh. My flesh says, no, I don't want to do that. Beloved, Jesus is offensive. If he's not offensive, then you have not sinned. You don't have flesh, and he ain't God. Jesus is offensive to the very core of our flesh. And we can take up offense in relation to that. Our flesh hungers for egocentrism and gratification. Our flesh is the two-year-old at the very center of our being saying, no, no. You want chicken nugget? No. You want some lemonade? No. And then all of a sudden, if we try the chicken nugget and the lemonade, all of a sudden we find out those words actually bring life. But it's our inner two-year-old saying, no. I can tell you. I, I felt this. I felt this whenever I had some health issues and I had to completely cut out dairy, dairy, cheese, pizza. If you're from up north, pizza. I had to cut these things out. Cheeseburgers, mac and cheese. And I tell you what, my flesh was going, no, no. That offends the very delightful part of eating a whole bunch of mac and cheese. No. Just naturally offensive. However, one piece of pizza, two days in bed. I had to learn to listen to the words of life. The words of life are, don't eat cheese. Don't eat dairy. Push this out of you and you will now... Not only escape pain, you will find life. Jesus is offensive, beloved. Jesus is offensive. If you have no flesh that you are battling inside of you, he is not offensive at all because all of his words are words of life. But he's offensive. Now watch, when, whenever he said all of those things, he was being offensive. He said, I'm going to heaven, and, and that means I'm God. I'm coming back, that means I'm God. That's very offensive. You need to take in my flesh, and taking in that flesh is eternal life for you. That's offensive to them. It's offensive to their flesh. It's offensive to their religions, to their relationship with God. Taking me in is actually eternal life. That's offensive to them. Jesus is offensive to our flesh. What he says, how he operates, who he is, he is offensive to our flesh. Secondly, the battle of whether or not to take up the offense is the battle between flesh or spirit. It says the spirit gives life, but the flesh counts for nothing. The spirit gives life, but the flesh counts for nothing. He's saying, do, you, do, do what I say offend you? Well, here, here comes the battlefield. The, the, the battlefield is this. Whenever we hear something challenging and the Holy Spirit comes upon us to deal with us, we can either say no and let that inner child inside of us, that two-year-old flesh say, no, I don't like that. Or we can embrace it and say, those are the words of life. 
You see, uh, Vic, Victor Frankel, he talks about this. I mean, he had lost his family. He had, he had lost uh, 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 children, wife, parents, all in the concentration camps of, of Germany. And, and he was stripped completely naked one day, and they were cutting his wedding ring off. He said to himself, you know, I, I have ultimate power in the fact that there's one thing you can't take away from me. You cannot take away my choice to react to what is being done to me. You see, now you have the power. It's called choice. And the choice is you can be offended by what is true that comes from the way, the truth, and the life. You can be offended by that. Or you can say, this is life. And I want to live that life. You see, he details what happens when we choose flesh. That's the third thing. One, Jesus is offensive to our flesh. Secondly, we have a choice. We're going to take up that offense and our inner two-year-old is going to say, I don't, I don't want to do that. And let me tell you what happens. When you read the Bible and all of a sudden it offends you, either you're going to start diminishing the Bible, you're going to be pushing God away, you're going to be stepping back, you're going to allegorize everything so that it really can't reach you anymore and you will start the process of separating yourself from God. You see, when we take up offense at Jesus, we take up offense at who Jesus is, what he's done in our lives, what he's doing in our lives, we begin to separate ourselves from Jesus. It's what happens. So if we let the flesh win, if we let the inner two-year-old win, we will create a diminishing of God, diminishing of our relationship with God, and we will degrade the Word of God. You see it happen all the time in culture. You see it happen all the time in, in people in the church. They kind of read through a text and it's really challenging to their flesh. And they're like, mm, I'm not for sure that's what that really means. Let's create a little merry-go-round of getting around what is really true so that my flesh wins and I can say no. To God working in my life. I can take up that offense. That offends me. I don't, want to, I don't want to be a part of that. That really offends me. Jesus said, I'm giving you the words of life. The flesh counts for nothing. Go back to his original question. Does this offend you? Does this offend you? There, there's a, a, an amazing thought let me say it this way. Judas didn't become Judas overnight. He's talking about it. I'm giving you the words of life, but one of you ain't going to believe. <laughs> one of you is going to become Judas. Judas didn't become Judas overnight. He was offended by things that Jesus said. He was offended by the way that Jesus was creating a kingdom that was not the kind of kingdom that he wanted. He even gets so offended, so distant from God that he's holding the purse strings and he begins to steal the money of the disciples. He gets so hardened to Jesus, he's taking Jesus' money. But it didn't happen overnight. Three and a half years, and he's taken 30 pieces of silver to betray the Son of God. Judas didn't become Judas overnight. It's a slow process of taking up offense against the words of God. And you know where we end up? One of my favorite things of all of moviedom, that's not a word, but I made it up, and all of moviedom is from Castaway. When uh, Tom Hanks finds himself on the island and the camera pans completely around him and he is so alone. Take up offense at Jesus. Those who take up and let their flesh say no and they keep doing this, they begin to separate themselves and they find themselves in the desert, alone, separated from God, bitter, and that critical relationship begins to destroy other critical relationships. See, Judas didn't become Judas overnight. If you let the flesh win, if when he says this, 
I am the way, the truth, and life. If you don't like that, and the inner flesh inside of you says, no, you've become distant from God and the Word of God and the words that bring life. Lastly, I want you to think about this. When the Spirit wins, whenever we give in to the Spirit, whenever this challenging word, these things that he said, you need to take in my flesh, and you, you, if you eat uh, me and drink my blood, then you're going to have life. That sounded strange at the time. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. But whenever they choose that, remember he said, you guys leaving too? You guys offended? You guys going to leave too? And Peter says, where are we going to go? He said two things. You have the words of life. And we've come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Whenever we choose that he is the Holy One of God, that he is the Messiah, and that the things he says are words of life, even when we don't understand, then we have ceased the power of taking up offense. And we become free. And our relationship with the Lord explodes. And there comes a day when Jesus is hanging on the cross right after he said, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. And the disciples go, that's life. Now I know what life is. Those were the words of life. Or they could have been offended by what he said and they would have become Judas Judas you know I've found myself on a couple of different occasions out at the, the family farm which uh, has a, a big bank of woods and a lot of, of briars and I found myself two or three times in the middle of the night sort of caught there uh, you know it's gone dark and, and I don't have a flashlight it's just me out there and I have, I have two barometers. One is the big field, and one is the stock tank. And I know, really, if I go east, I, I get to, to the stock tank. If I go west, I get to the big field, and then I know where I am. But you know what? I'm going to get cut along the way. <laughs> I'm going to get caught by briars. I'm going to listen to animals that make me uncomfortable run by me, probably. And I'm going to kind of wandering in the darkness, but I know that if I go that direction, I'll find that stock tank. If I go that direction, I'll find the big field. See, Jesus says some things that are hard and they're tough. And they're so challenging to our flesh that we reel at them. But guess what? If we don't take up offense, if we just say, okay, that's the word. That's the word of life. I don't understand it right now. We head that direction. We may get scraped up a little bit. But we will find out they are the words of life. And don't you think on the day that they see Jesus breaking the bread alive after three days in the tomb, breaking the bread at the meal, blessing the cup that they go now I know what he meant when he said drink my blood eat my flesh and you'll have eternal life so beloved do you want to find yourself on the desert island alone distant from God then let your flesh win every time the Lord challenges you. Every time you have a moment of conviction, if you go, no, I don't think so. The Bible just must not be accurate. I don't like this. When it says, take up your cross, you say, no, I don't think so. When that two-year-old inside of you, your flesh says, no, you're taking up offense and you're creating a rift between you and God and you and the Word of God, which brings life. And with each one that you take up, you get further and further and further and further separated. And then you need to hear this question from Jesus Christ. Does this offend you? Or you can say, you know what? <laughs> you know what? 
I don't get it. But you're Messiah, and your words are life. Therefore, I'm going to choose that. I, the battleground is flesh or spirit. I'm going to choose the spirit. Then we find out that's where life is. I want to encourage you, first of all, to look deep. Have you taken up offense against your God? Do you feel separated from your God, then maybe you've taken up offense at your God. You want to be free? Two steps. Reaffirm him as your savior. And reaffirm his words, even if you don't understand them, as the words of life. Lord, I'm um, convicted by your conviction. When your spirit um, tells me something hard, reveals something that's uncomfortable, I reel against that. Whenever you challenge me to do something, I reel against that. Whenever you long for your word to be planted into me, into me my flesh just reels against that. And my inner two-year-old flesh says, No! And Lord, I get offended. So Lord, I choose, and I pray everyone who's watching this chooses to not be offended by the powerful words of our God. And that we would choose to see them as the source of life, not something to be offended by. So, Lord, I want you to look in the depths of the heart of everyone here who's listening, everyone who's watching, and see if they've taken up offense. Reveal it to them if they're offended by you, if they've taken up offense by what the people of God have done, if they've taken up offense by a theology that they disagree with because they just don't like it. Pray what is true, what is right, what is from the Word of God would be revealed and that they would choose that you are the Savior, the Holy One of God, and that you are giving the words of life. Help them, Lord Jesus, to be free and no longer distant from you. Lord, we know Judas didn't become Judas overnight. And I pray, Lord, that we would never follow his path. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a, uh, uh, Gene and I were talking the other day, there's a, um, just sort of a time frame. We just, our kids are grown, but there's a time frame when we're like, it's time to see the kids. We've got to see the kids. We hate the separation. Our God hates the separation. And he doesn't give things that separates us. He says hard things, and many times we choose to be offended and separate ourselves. So, the words of Jesus are the words of life. You can see them as words of life even if you don't understand them, or you can be offended by them, and you can take up offense, and you can start a life that would lead you to a desert island, or... You can just choose that he's a savior, even if you don't understand. And one day you will. God bless you.